Welcome back to America's Voice Live. I'm Jessica Rivera. Now let's bring in our next guest, former senior policy advisor to President Trump and current policy director for President Trump's only official super PAC, America First Policies, Mr. Curtis Ellis. Welcome, Curtis. Nice to be here. Okay, so we're going to talk about universal mail-in voting and just mail-in voting in general. So why are people worried about their votes not being counted? And I believe this is happening on both sides of the aisle. Uh, that's true. You have a study from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, very reputable organization, probably the leading science uh, outfit in the world. And the logistical, uh, the logistical problems of mail-in voting are significant. It's much more logistically difficult to conduct an election by mail than it is in person. You have to have chain of custody. You have to secure and make sure that the ballots uh, are coming from the people that they're supposed to be coming from uh, and that they're not tampered with along the way and that they're all counted. Uh, the, if you've never voted by mail before, you could, you could mess this up. And the other problem with universal mail in balloting is sheer volume. You're going to be basically inundating inexperienced poll workers with just mountains of ballots and asking them to handle them in a way that they're not used to doing. Now, it's one thing for absentee voting. We've done this by mail for forever. Every campaign has an absentee ballot program. That's when a voter requests a ballot by mail to be mailed to them. So the voter does the outreach to the Board of Elections, say, please mail me a ballot. I'm not going to be home, and I'm not going to be able to make it to the polling place in person. So mail me a ballot, and I'll mail it back to you. Now, that's different than what they're talking about now, because what they're talking about now is where you don't even have to ask for a ballot. The Board of Election is going to mail a ballot to everybody that's on the voter roll, to every registered voter. Now, this is just a huge, number one, we don't, know if everybody on the voter roll is still alive, if they're still living there. People move. Newsflash, people move. Sometimes they move out of state. Sometimes people move into the place they moved out of. And you could have two people registered at the same address. So that's just a hint of the kind of logistical problems you encounter when you start mailing out ballots to people who haven't even asked for them. And then when you get them back, What's required is that you sign an envelope on the outside, right? The outside of the envelope, you have to sign it, and then that signature has to be checked against the signature that's on file at the voting place. Now, it's one thing if you do this with absentee ballots where not, you're not going to have millions of them coming back. But when you have universal mail-in voting, you've just got a nightmare. And uh, so if those signatures don't match, the whole thing gets tossed out and the ballot doesn't get counted. And that's what we've seen happening in these primaries that have been done by universal mail-in ballot. Just as huge percentages of votes aren't being counted, they're invalid, they don't meet the requirements. So that's a huge problem. And now the post office has had job reliance issues and money issues for years. This has happened under many uh, different administrations. It really doesn't have to do with much about uh, Republicans or Democrats. But without it being an election year, they already have these issues. So how do Democrats think the post office would be able to handle the added work of uh, this national mail-in voting? And how do they think this is the answer? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. Look. We want everybody to feel good about voting. We don't want people to feel that they have to risk their lives to cast a vote, that they're going to catch the, the COVID virus. They weren't, they weren't afraid to go out and protest and march against George Floyd. But, you know, I, I, I can understand that there's some 80-year-old people out there that are at high risk and they maybe don't want to risk their life to vote. We need to have a discussion of how to do this right. But to for the, for the Democrats or for anyone to say, well, we've got the solution, it's universal mail-in voting, end of discussion, and if you disagree with me, you're trying to steal the election, that's not a good faith discussion. We have 78 days now to the election to revamp the entire electoral system in 78 days is just logistically impossible. It takes longer than that to put together a community theater project. 
We're talking about a national election, a very highly emotionally charged election. What I'm afraid of is that you could very easily have a situation where there are millions of uncounted ballots in swing states, and we do not get an election re uh, result. We do not have a winner declared in the presidential contest on election night. And this could stretch on for days, like we saw with Bush versus Gore in Florida in 2000. And you could have a situation where both sides end up declaring victory, and there are still millions of uncounted ballots. And then you have reports of new ballots showing up. Some of these reports could be true. Some of them will be fake. And there's going to be, uh, it could really lead to chaos in the electoral system. And we've already seen that the Antifa type people are more than willing to go smash windows and so called peacefully protest, uh, demanding that President Trump concede. Otherwise, he's stealing the election and he refuses to leave office and he's, you know, trying to be a dictator. We could have very serious consequences, and I'm afraid people could get hurt in that type of bat and fear. So it's really reckless and irresponsible to be trying to re-engineer our election system 70 days, 78 days out from a very controversial, very highly emotionally charged election. It's just irresponsible. And with national universal mail-in voting, wouldn't the odds, forget the odds of internal interference, what would the odds be um, with, for international interference? Don't those odds go up? We're, we're exactly right. That's a very good point. I hadn't included that. I wrote about this at WND.com. Everybody's concerned about election interference, foreign election interference. Uh, you don't know if somebody's out there printing fake ballots and then dump them into the mail system, dump them into some some box uh, someplace that people then think they've got a ballot. They don't have a ballot. Their ballot's not counted. They start protesting. They go to the media and say, my ballot, I never got my ballot counted. And everybody thinks it's because, you know, orange man, bad orange man wouldn't count their vote, but actually it was a fake ballot printed by the Chinese or something. Uh, look, the, the, the purpose of the last election interference campaign where the Russians bought $46,000 worth of Facebook ads, and that's how they interfered with our election, the goal was to sow chaos and distrust in the electoral system. If we go to universal mail-in voting, the Democrats, who are the ones pushing for this, will do more to sow distrust in our electoral system than the Russians did with their $46,000 worth of really squirrely Facebook ads last time around. It's, it, it's really not a, it, it's, it's not a good system. Look, there are states that do universal mail-in voting. It took them years, years to perfect the system so there's confidence that the results are accurate and that there's integrity in the system. It took them years to do it, not 78 days. And Curtis, to, my, to the point of the next question, which you already touched on, many say there are states that already do this. Colorado, the state that I live in, is one of them. So universal mail-in voting. So how come the nation can't just switch over? Is this process easy? But like you just stated, it takes lots of money. It takes lots of years of testing. And they can't just do it in a few months. It's not that simple. And then we have to go through the process of trying to get Congress to agree when we can't even get them to agree on a stimulus package to help the American people right now. So the process is not that easy. Now, my next question yeah. is, you know, we hear with the mainstream media uh, talking about this percentage of mail-in voting fraud and how it's so low that it's 0.0025%. So let's mm -hmm. say this is 100% accurate. Is that percentage including absentee voting or is that national universal voting mail-in voting because i from what i understand we've never done it on a national level we've only done it some he states here and there and that's where they're getting that number and i think absentee voting they're including because yeah that one is a lot lower because there's a a, a longer verification process but we haven't done this on a national level like some people think correct that is correct. We haven't done it on a national level, so they're comparing apples to oranges. The absentee voting system is well established. I contact my election board and say, please send me a ballot. Here's my address. You'll find my name on the rolls. They send me a ballot. I then, and it has instructions, I fill out my ballot, stuff it in an envelope, and then put that envelope in another envelope and sign the outside envelope. 
and they check it. They, I send it back in plenty of time for them to get it. They check my signature on the envelope against my signature on the voting rolls. That's very different than universal mail-in voting, where the election board just sends out ballots to everybody on the, on the list. There's something really uh, internally contradictory about the whole Democrats' message on this. For four years, they've been telling us that Donald Trump is worse than Hitler, worse than Hitler. He's a threat to democracy. He's going to—he's a dictator. Yet people are supposed to—but but they're not being asked to—look, if that's true, if we believe that, he's worse than Hitler, I should be ready to storm the beaches of Normandy and face machine gun fire to get this guy out of office. But at the same time, we're being told, no, you can't go and vote in person. Even Fauci says you can vote in person. There's a way to do it safely. And if he is indeed worse than Hitler, as they say, it would be your duty to steal the election, to do anything to get this guy out of office. And you can't tell me that these Antifa types, the people that are really fired up about this, would feel it is their moral duty to forge ballots to do whatever it takes to get this guy out of office. But they're telling us he's worse than Hitler. Don't risk your life. Don't risk the comfort of your home. And, oh, nobody would ever think of defrauding or, or, or you know, doing something mail-in, vote fraud. No, 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 nobody would vote fraud. I mean, the whole thing doesn't add up. It's just, but my concern is it's just logistically impossible to do this. Absolutely. Maybe next Absolutely. year, maybe the next election. Start planning now and in 2024. And I agree. All right, Curtis, thank you so much for your time today. And stick with us because we have much more coming up here on America's Voice Live.